If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this, please subscribe, hit that like button, and let me know that you like watching these videos. There is a GoFundMe campaign that I have going right now. You can find the link down in the description. If you feel like you want to support me, that's cool. Anything helps. I really appreciate all your support. Um, I thought this was a dying art, but you guys on YouTube have shown me that, you know, they're still alive and you guys are still out there trying to learn. And I'm happy to teach you. See you guys in my videos. YouTube, what's up, what's happening? Here I am today bringing you another video. And today, we're going to be going over script lettering. We're going to go over it in pretty good detail. There's no point in doing script if you're not going to do it right. A lot of customers will be pissed if you come and pick up their shirt or whatever and you don't have it just on point. And script, it's like universal. Anywhere you go, and a lot of things you do, you'll have to use script. Whether you're going to cut out a stencil for it, whether you're, you're just going to paint it freehand, you know, it's, there's still a style, there's still a certain way that, you know, you get a certain look to it and, you know, we're going to go over that today. So today, for today's exercise, like always, you're going to need your handy dandy, uh, you know, <clears throat> spray adhesive here, your 3M, you know, Super 77 looks good. You're going to need some paper towels, like always, some regular old bounties. They were great. Um, and of course you're going to need your airbrush right here with some Createx Black is what we're running today. So <clears throat> again, before you start this exercise, I urge you to go back and watch my previous videos and do the previous exercises so that you could uh, work your way up to this point and you know what we're doing and what I'm talking about as well as you have a pretty good idea of how to use your airbrush before um, you know getting into this exercise so um, yeah as always we start off by putting our um, paper tiles up on there with some spray adhesive <clears throat> So, in the previous videos, I always talked about, um, you know, going thick to thin with the airbrush without stopping. And um, that's a lot of the premise for airbrushing script. So, uh, instead of trying to show you, like, every letter looks like this because every artist will have his own style, I will show you the what I call the basics, I guess, or what I would call the basic idea or the concept or the, the guide, I guess, for script. So with any name, and I'm going to start off by just laying a name, just normally, I guess, and I'll use my own name. So. As you can see there, <clears throat> it's just flat. Um, there is no thick or thin, you know, so when you do cursive, main thing always, you know, cursive, it goes always connected, so you always have to remember to add in your connections there, like so. And the other major thing that I see a lot of artists, you know, get wrong or do in the wrong way or just, you know, they just don't follow consistently through is the thickness. Every single downstroke, everywhere where the name goes down, or even slightly a little bit, depending on the angle, I guess would be the thickness that you would make it. But everywhere where it goes down, you'd have to keep it about the same thickness. So, starting here, something like that and there you go that's your basic guideline for basic script now of course if you're really good with your airbrush if you've practiced already it is possible to do that script with one stroke but as you can see it is not as clear 
as the first one. Um, this is pretty old style doing it this way, you know, doing the, the dagger strokes going down and, you know, doing it that way. That's pretty old school. Um, I think nowadays most artists have moved to this cleaner way of doing the lines. Like so, and then picking them up. And I guess that just takes a little bit more practice, but as you can see right there, that, that's just a lot cleaner than that one. But there is your basic example of a, a really good script. So, so one thing I would really recommend is practicing your whole alphabet, right? Making sure that you know, you know, where your A gets thick and where it gets thin. You know, where your B gets thick and where it gets thin. And your C. And your D. And your E. And And you can just practice these all day, every day. I mean, it's your own style from there, you know, but <clears throat> what you transpire from there is up to you. Cursive is always about having fun. It's not about following a certain way of doing things or nothing like that. So if you want to add swirls in, It's always a way. And just like that, you'll have a great, fantastic scroll name. And you could, you know, again, these go everywhere. You play around with them and you'll find great ways to just keep playing and adding. <clears throat> and that's again using your thick to thin and you're just a quick hand of motion. You'll get a lot of good squirrels and a lot of good pinstriping kind of thing going on. But again, cursive without the pinstriping is what you need to focus on. always have to just be flat. You don't always have to just work off of a flat line. You could do curved, you know, you could do a curved line, you could do, you know, a circular, you, you know, there's just anywhere at any position. And again, I would make sure you practice these pretty good. Make sure you're able to do a flat name. Make sure you're able to do a curved name. Make sure you're able to do a circular one. And again, the whole purpose of doing these you know, ahead of time is that so when the time comes, you're able to offer different styles, different flavors, different ways of going about your script. You're not just limited to just, oh, I could, you know, straight is where I'm at and that's where I'm doing. You know, you got to make sure you practice all of this and, um, what I cannot stress enough is actually practicing your individual letters. Make sure you learn them, make sure you learn what they look like, and um, you know, stylizing can go from there. But another great thing to do when, or practice when you get into cursive, is how to shade it. And um, you could switch colors for this, but old school way, and still the way that a lot of artists do it is just using the same color you have in there. Just make a fuzzy line, make a line that's you know not 
thick. You know. And there you go, like that, you'll have shading. Um, and again, you can scroll out with the shades, like so. And you could add some little star effects. You know, use your dagger stroke in along with the cursive because the dagger stroke and the cursive just work really good together so there's that you know always always just remember to always remember the different ways if you could place it don't be limited to just flat flat gets boring uh, you know stuff like this you know people want to see stuff like that you know <clears throat> just take them back to the old school and let them know how it's done and um Another very key thing when doing cursive that I see a lot of artists make this mistake, or even I used to make this mistake a lot, is the size of the letters. Uh, yeah, sure, your capital letter could be bigger, you know, but all the rest of the other ones, you know, I could do this. But if this and this and this were different sizes, you know, if I did this, You know, that just doesn't look right. It looks like a kid wrote it. It doesn't look, you know, even if you do this, there really is no saving that. It just, <laughs> you know, it's not that, it's not uniform. It doesn't look good. So always remember to make them about the same size, you know, keep them uniform and keep them nice. Um, I think it's a way of playing with the human eye. Uh, they'd rather see something that's, you know, well put together as opposed to something that looks sloppy um, and that's just I think most people in general would would prefer to see that <clears throat> um, but yeah guys that, those are pretty much uh, the few basic tips a few basic tricks that I have for you um, when it comes to airbrushing the script if you airbrush if you practice your script if you practice your letters you know this is a good way that I used to do back in the day I would set up lines like this, you know, just set up some fuzzy lines going down, and then I would just start A, B, C, D, E, F, and I would just go all the way down, basic layout done as you can see I didn't really go and make these fancy or nothing. Then I'd go from there and fix them and you know make them look how I wanted to. Just like that, I would practice this every day, all day, every day. And I did practice this for like a year or something before I really felt comfortable enough to where I could just, you know, just string them together. And I could just pump them out like so. 
I mean, the more time you spend, the nicer they're gonna look. But again, uh, doing that single stroke stuff, um, I would not recommend this stuff anymore. Uh, that, again, that's just old school way doing it with the old guns. As you can see, it just doesn't provide a very nice look. Nowadays, we do just go with this nice, clean and crisp look. So, there you go, guys. There you have it. Uh, practice your script lettering every day, um, and you'll get pretty good at it. Remember my tips here from this uh, video, and you'll have a pretty good chance of getting better um, faster than as opposed to having to just practice on your own without nobody telling you anything. So. Yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my video. And um, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. We'll see you guys in the next video. Later.